Before we begin with this video, I'm doing a live stream with Darren from Vitra to talk about this shower. We'll be answering your questions on this video live on this channel on the 14th of April 2022. So if you've got any comments, comment them below and also click the link to the live video and set yourself a notification up so you don't miss it in April. Hi guys, my name's James. Today we are going to be installing a recessed shower valve on the timber frame partition wall behind us here. Hopefully that's that's going to give you an idea as to what I go through as a professional plumber when I'm thinking about this from depths of the shower valve to putting in the outlets and also finishing off the job. If you like this video click the like comment below and also hit the subscribe button and the notification as well. Let's get on with the video. Hold tight! So the first thing I'd recommend you do when you're doing this sort of work is to understand the components that you're going to be installing. In this video, I'm going to be installing a Vitra V-Box. This is a dual outlet shower box. From an end user perspective, the best thing about using a V-Box is the fact that they're number one, really reliable. If they're installed really well, you're never gonna have a problem with them. But also from one box, you can have multiple different decors. For instance, we've got a matte black decor here, a brush silver and also like a copper gold one and that's going to be the one that I'm installing today but also there's multiple fascia plates as well what I'm saying is is that behind the wall everything's the same but on the front end you've got multiple different choices and options for you to install or if you're a plumber you can have loads of e-boxes in the van and then just offer different fascia plates to your customers so that's really cool looking at the v-box itself we've got a cover here that can pop off We've got an internal plate where we can actually install our valve fascia and our different types of valve, the different types of colours and all that when we second fix. And I'll be showing you how to do that later on in the video. Of course, being a man, I often chuck away the installation instructions, but Vitra have been good enough to actually shove them on the front of it. So I can't even throw them away. So for once, I'll have to read them and do it right the first time. The inlets are denoted. We've got a blue on this side for the cold. We've got a hot on this side, obviously for the hot. Then we've got the top outlet here going to a beautiful, lovely golden pan head and also our bottom outlet here which is going to go to our handset outlet. It's worth noting as well that these can also divert to a bath fill so you've got loads and loads of options just from this one box here and then adding on the different components that you can use to suit the end user's requirements when it's all done. The minimum finished wall depth is going to be 50 mil. The maximum is 70 mil. I would always recommend you try and go within those. Don't try and push the boundaries and going right up to 17, right down to 50. As a plumber, I'd always recommend when you're doing your first fix, which we're going to be doing in a minute, that you try to keep those in between. Because if you get it wrong and this is sticking out too far or it's not far enough, the whole job is ruined, okay? So please, 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 please listen, all right? Later on in the job, we will be putting in this valve body here and that will replace the plate in there. That seals up flat on the plate using a selection of rubber rings on here. But for now, what I think we should move on to is actually installing the V-Box valve into our studding and showing you how to get that depth correct. So let's move on to the next stage, oh yeah! So now we've had a look at the V-Box shower valve itself, let's actually get it prepared to go over to the pipe work size that we're going to be using. In the UK we use 15 millimetre copper pipe but there could be loads of different sizes that you guys use around the world. But today that's what we're going to do, we're going to invert it over to 15 millimetre pipe using a half inch to 15 millimetre connector. I'm using Loctite 55 for this so I'm just going to put my thumb on there, always going to the first thread. Don't need to put loads of it on, this stuff's really, really good at sealing. And then we'll just pop in the fitting and then we can just nice and easily do it up. I wouldn't recommend doing them up like this if you're worried about scrunching the thread or you're not used to using adjustable spanners. It's just because I've done it for years, usually I protect that thread when doing this bit of the job. So that's now ready to go over to 15 mil and we'll just do that to every one of these nice and quickly. Once you've done that, that is pretty much all the preparation you need to do for the V-Box itself. We can now prepare our timber frame 
for the shower valve. So the next thing we need to do is calculate what depth we want our V-box to be. Now we've got a finished stud here, haven't we? But the finished wall is gonna be at least another 20 mil off that because if we were on site, we'd have a backer type board or some sort of waterproof shower boarding. There might be a membrane. After that, we'll probably have our adhesive for our tiles and then our tile thickness. And that can all add up when it comes to what we want our depth to be. We don't wanna get that wrong, do we? So what I generally do is I actually think to myself, you know what, the depth of all the bits, regardless of most wall substrates, is gonna be roughly about an inch, which is roughly what this gauge is here, and which is where we can cut off our finished shroud when we come to the second fix later on in this video. So this is how I'd figure this out. One of the methods is, is we can measure off this piece here, the depth of what we think our substrate is gonna be. And say we thought that was gonna be, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 millimeters. And then what we do is we'd add 15 or 20 millimeters to this depth here. The other way is, is that I know that my cut depth is here, but I'm gonna have 20 mil of substrate on there, which means I'm gonna be well within our tolerance for cutting that just here. So what I could do is grab my tape measure, measure that, that's 78 millimeters. I can pull that back to 78 mil which is there. And then I know that's the depth that I want my plate to be at when I do this install. Oh yeah, baby. Right, I like to have a lovely big plate of wood and just to get the right width here, or roughly the right width, I'm just gonna pop that in there and then run that on my skill saw. And that should fit nicely in this gap. I'll have to batten this out a little bit as well. We should be able to screw straight through this into the side of our plywood board. But along the top there, we might have to batten it. We don't want to batten the bottom of the top too much because we've got pipes going in, haven't we? So we need to think about that whilst we're doing this install. God, these benches are good. You can find them on the Amazon store. Oh yeah, baby. Now, I like to use a laser so I get a nice, accurate line all the way up our stud in that meets exactly on the line that we made a few minutes ago. And then we can get our bit directly in the right place. So now that we've got that first depth lasered onto the sidewall, we can then copy that depth all around the timber frame, making sure then that when we put our valve on that flat piece of wood, it will also be square to the timber frame wall always when it's sticking out of the tiles. It's all these things that I do now that will make this job a success and you'll see why later on in the video. <laughs> Now, because that's in at the top there, I've got the opportunity then to just measure up these other sides and make sure that they're all at the same depth. So I can pop a few in at the side there now to hold that in. Right, so now we've got our wood on. I hope you sort of got the idea there that we've put extra in, okay? Because if this wood moves after this job is done, that's it, the whole job is ruined. We've got to take the wall off and everything to try and rectify that problem. So we've made sure 100% that it's not gonna move. If you wanted to go even further, you could glue those bits of wood in as well and really, really make sure that there's not gonna be a problem. Next thing we need to do now is just need to make sure for a start that our outlets are the right way around, are hot and are cold, our top outlet, and our handset outlet. Then I've measured already the center of the shower. Here is our center mark here. So what I want to do is just ping a center mark. So in here, there's our center line there. Right, so there's our center line there. I'm actually gonna use the smaller hole. Great thing about these, they leave loads of holes for us to get a good fix it on. Okay, so we've got one screw in there now, and now I can just sit this on top like so, and get my other screws in at my leisure. We can just bring this just to where we want it, and we'll just mark that as well. Absolutely spot on both ways. Now I'll just fill this up quickly, and we're all good. 
Right then, everybody, hopefully you thought that was really easy. So far, if you're new to this process, hopefully it's shedding some light for you when it comes to doing it. And also, if you're a seasoned plumber, you've been doing it for years, hopefully you can just watch it and go, good job, well done. So now I'm gonna show you how we fix our fixing plate for the handset outlet. Should be really easy. So it's imperative for you to have a good fixing because there are bits that you're gonna be lifting off the handset, popping it back on. You might move the overhead set, bits and bobs like that. So what I'd recommend is you buy, some people would call this a bib tap outlet, but it's a half inch female to a 15 mil compression with three holes all molded into one brass body. Um, I've already got a straight half inch coupling. This is just straight half inch either way. There's no taper in there, don't worry. I'm not trying to sneak a compression fitting in uh, for you seasoned plumbers out there. And I'm just gonna screw this on now and get this bit tightened up. And then what we've done is we've got rid of an unknown, which is how many threads this is gonna take to go in to be nicely sealed. Effectively, I want to end up with something that looks uh, a little bit like this and is all ready to go on. So. Lovely, here we go. Right, so the route to a good fixing is a nice little bit of study weddy woo woo. Yes, that is English for bit of wood. Next thing I'm gonna do is just draw an arrow so we know which bit is going upwards, yeah? I'm gonna measure across roughly 18 centimeters, which is our meeting point. I've got the center on there now. And then we know exactly where to put this center of that, don't we? we Now I've got this built up, what I want to do is know exactly what depth I need to be at. So we know which way up this is. We can see that that obviously is gonna to be too far out because you know our pipe work's gonna be level. We need to go back. You could even just put it like this if you wanted and said, right, I know for a fact that my pipe work's gonna to come to a certain distance. I want this much thread sticking out. This is the sort of thing you need to think about and it takes time planning. You need to know exactly what is going on the wall. I, I can't really stress that enough. And it's really difficult for me to convey in a YouTube video, but just think about what is gonna go on that wall. Think about the tile adhesive, think about the depth of the tile. If you're using a shower panel board like we are today, think about how thick that is and how thick the glue will be and think maybe what you're gluing that on top of. You know, ugh, so hard for me to get across to you guys, but it's really important. I know that we've got a little bit of panel going on that. I'm just gonna mark that bit just there. So that's got a little bit, nice little bit of depth there for our panel. Also, now that we've got that line there, I can just measure back off this other stud as well. We'll measure off here and know that I'm just so that's 63 mil. 63 mil, same again. Just get that lengthened out. Now that we know how far back to go, we just wanna make sure that we're now level with the box. I'm just gonna use a laser to do that. Really, really simple process. Right, so there we go. The bubble was in the right place. We know how far back our depth needs to be. I mean, it doesn't get all that much easier, does it, this sort of job? So there we go, there we are. That is spiffo, where we wanna be, that is. Absolutely magic, look at that. Okay. Right, so let's just whack a couple of screws in here and we're all good to go. So gang, this job is really taking off, isn't it? We're getting there now, we're getting to the, the good creme de month bit, the bit that I love, you know me. What I'm going to do is we're gonna do the, a similar type job, but we're just gonna get the overhead pan head fixing plate in as well. It's exactly the same fixing plate as the one here, apart from this one doesn't have the addition of a straight coupling in it that we've put in because we don't need that. But what we do need to think about is getting the end of our thread to be as close to flush with the finished project depth. So here is the piece. Now, first thing you wanna do, I recommend that you screw in, if you've got an overhead pan head like this beautiful one here from Vitra, just screw it in till it's tight and then make a mark to see how far you screwed it in before it stopped. And then you'll know exactly how far it's gonna go in. Right, so I'm going up high for this, wish me luck. <laughs> so my top cover on this, I'm just gonna pop this on like so, and then I'm gonna make my mark at the back. 
So yet again, this bit is really important. What we're trying to do is get the right depth, account for the depth of whatever wall substrate we're going to use. And by substrate, I mean the backer board we might use, the depth of the adhesive, the depth of the tile, or if we're using a wall mounted bit, that as well. And then going, right, we're actually going to be going into the wall this time because we've got a female fitting and the thread on the overhead pan head is male. So we want to account for that to screw up, be watertight, but also eventually flush with our finished wall surface. Right then guys, we're really getting somewhere now, aren't we? We've got the V-Box Beast in, we've got our little handset outlet popped on the wall, we know that's gonna be at the right depth, and we've got the same up the top with the overhead pan head. So now it's time for a bit of creme de month work. Let's get everything piped up. See if you can notice what I did wrong here. I didn't put a bit of gaffer tape over the inlet, but it doesn't matter. I covered it up with my finger and then hoovered out any dust just in case. Getting the overhead outlet in was a breeze, nice and easy. Just remember when you're doing any bending, just to you know take your time, like I say, practice a lot as well. On all of the compression fittings, I'm popping on jointing compound. Some people don't like using compression fittings in concealed, unaccessible places. You can use solder if you like. I did that in the other Vitra video we did for their earlier concealed valve, but I just thought I'd show you this time round the installation using compression fittings. I do love getting my old pipe bender out and it's always a sign of a decent bit of plumbing when you've got a few bends in there. It also reduces the amount of solders you have to do near wood and it's just a nice thing to do. It does take practice and also to know your torch to be able to do soldering like I am now without burning any wood or without burning any plastic. The nib I'm using on here is a really small Rothenberger nib and you can find that in our Amazon store. This is probably the best nib for people who are new to plumbing to start soldering with. Of course, even though it's not going to be seen, let's pop a little bit of brass on these pipes anyway and make them look beautiful. I think you'll agree the finished product for this, even though it's all going to get covered up and no one's ever going to see it again, is something that's truly beautiful. I love doing this sort of work. I love doing pipe work. And it's even better when you know that you're piping up to such a great shower valve. The finished product from this is going to look absolutely amazing. Now we're almost ready to move on to our second fix. So then, we've got to a brilliant stage. Like we've got this lovely pipe work in. I've already turned the water on and checked our connections and checked all our joints. We've got no leaks, so we're ready to move on to the next stage. What I would usually recommend you put on now is a backing board, a special board for a shower. Um, what we're gonna do, because this is just for a demo purpose, I'm just gonna show you how that would work. So we'd have our board on like this. This is a special hardy backer board, which is waterproof and is designed to go on showers. And you do that obviously all the way up here. And then what we do is we get a little protective shroud that Vitra supply and pop that around here. And then what I tend to do is just get a little bit of glue, a bit of CT1 or something like that or silicon and we'll silicon that on. A 
A great feature of the V-Box that I think you're gonna see now is that it's square, making it really easy for you to tile round or to scribe round when you're doing the second fix. Once you've got on whatever your finished wall is gonna be, be it tiles or the shower board that we're putting onto our timber frame here for this demonstration, we can then move on to second fixing our outlets. Both outlets have a pretty similar process. For the handset, I'll use Loctite 55 on the thread and then silicon around the hole to make sure that if we do get any water going behind our shroud, it's not gonna get into behind the tiles or behind the shower board. Then we can do that up. Nice little trick for you here, a nice little tip, is if you're having trouble once you've tightened everything up to get it nicely in line, you can either grab the body of the valve with some cloth over it to protect the lovely decorative copper golden brilliance, or you can pop on an old compression fitting and then use that with a set of grips to move it round to the position that you want it to be in. Also, just watching this back as I'm editing it, it looks like the handset outlet is in two bits. That's just the reflection, guys, and actually goes to show how lovely and shiny this copper shower is. So don't worry, it's not in two bits, it's in one, it's just a reflection. Very similar procedure with the pan head, just the other way around, really. I'll pop Loctite 55 on the thread of the pan head arm connector, then screw that in and then pop some silicon around that as well for the same reasons, although you really shouldn't be getting water up that high. And if you are, well, what are you doing in the shower? Both the handset and this beautiful pan head seal up in the normal way with a rubber valve. This is probably the nicest pan head I've ever fitted. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Yes, that's all I can say. <laughs> So the first thing we do during the second fix of the V-Box is get our shroud cut away. I always use a multi-tool for this, but you probably could use a standing knife quite a few times to score it and then get it off. Then making sure that we've isolated the shower again, we use a four mil Allen key to slacken off each corner of the cover plate and also a slotted screwdriver to undo the screw in the middle. I popped a little bit of blue roll in here because there was a little bit of water pressure left over from when I turned the water off and I wanted to make sure that didn't run all over my lovely decorative bit of finish. Once you've done that, take off the cover plate and remove the bungs. Then you can install the V-Box concealed shower valve. Make sure that all the rubber washers are in the plate at the back of the valve. If you you want you can install two guide lugs to guide it into the right position but I didn't need to do this because I'm wicked you know what I mean then when we're doing it up just imagine you're tightening up a snare drum skin that means you do each opposite corner not everything next to it just do them up lightly first and then slowly nip each opposite corner up until you can't nip them up anymore at this point if you want you can put some more silicon around the edge of the cut of your v-box shroud and the finished surface of your shower but Vitra supply a really cool cover plate to go over all of this with rubberized skirts so it will seal up anyway they're really really good they hold on with four screws once you've got that on push the decorative plate on and guys you can really see now how this is coming together how beautiful this looks the small on off valve knob just clicks in at the top and then the temperature valve on the bottom does up with a two and a half mil allen key just make sure you get this commissioned right so at the stopper it only goes up to 38 degrees then if the user or or my wife wants it any hotter than that, they can turn the button in and get a ridiculously warm shower going. So then guys, we turn the lights down a little bit, just so it looks a bit more roomy. Um, I, honestly, I love this finish. I love the gold finish. Let us know in the comments below which one you prefer. If, whether you like the nickel, the copper gold one that I've got behind us here, or if you like the matte black. But look, so now we've got it on. Let me just demonstrate for you how this works. So if we turn this to one, we're gonna get this piece coming out. Look at that. Perfect for washing your noggin when you've dyed your hair. I haven't had to dye mine yet, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, we've got uh, temperature control. What you usually do now is commission for about 38 degrees at the cutoff point, and then press this in. We can swing around and get really, really hot. What I call a lady shower temperature, because my wife always tends to have the water at an insane temperature. You can go over to cold as well. Oh, 
man, it's absolutely amazing. So there's that there. Ooh, let that drop out a bit. Now we'll go to the top one. Exactly the same thing. Right, look, we'll get some steam coming out here in a sec. Yeah, it's really hot. The mad thing is I can go around the back and touch the pipes. <laughs> that is so good. I always get excited, don't I, when I'm doing this. I love it. Look at that. Really going for it. Lovely. What a beautiful shower, guys. What a lovely job as well. I'm really, really happy with this. Absolutely amazing. Let's go to the conclusion. So there we go, guys. Firstly, what I'd say is thanks Vitra for making an amazing shower box. Like I've done in the other video, this shower box could be installed on a wall, you know, a brick wall, but I thought it'd be good for you guys to see how we do it on timber frame because that gives you a little bit more knowledge going forward from this channel. So I've really enjoyed this. A couple of things that I think you should think about or you should always consider when you're doing this sort of work is number one, plan your depths properly. Number two, make sure you do all your pipe work nice and neat. Make sure that it's always nicely clipped. Make sure that you purge your pipe work before you bring it up to the valve. I didn't show that in this video, but what we normally do is just slack off those two nuts and get some water out up to there. And then we put everything in again and then we pressure test and make sure everything was okay. Number four is to make sure that you use all the sealing aids that are sent out with the shower when you buy a vitro shower uh, to make sure that we don't get any leaking behind this. Number five, read the instructions. Simple, isn't it? So if you've got any more questions about it, please put them in the comments below. So guys, thanks ever so much for watching today. If you want to get sneak peeks of videos, then I highly recommend you join the AL Army for live streams every Thursday evening. Please hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, hit the like and comment below, and I'll see you in the next Plumber Parts video. And remember to hold tight. See you later. WhatsApp's probably going to be the place as well that I'll share all the behind the scenes stuff. So what I'll probably do over the next few days, some of you this will probably matter to, some, probably most of you this won't matter because most of you are behind the scenes members already. Um, but we'll keep the behind...